I was in Cambodia for five days, essentially to do a film ricky for a documentary I have been commissioned to do. I felt like the Khmer temples of Angkor Wat were built only for the 20th century photographer. I was nevertheless bitterly disappointed that the tour operator of Vieta disallowed me to participate in a private group tour I had booked and paid for. I was disallowed on the grounds that I am physically challenged. I was promised a refund on email but have not got it so far till July 2019. But I am happy to share videos of the tethered balloon ride to view Angkor Wat at sunset. Suspended in midair in a helium balloon over Angkor Wat in Siem Reap, Cambodia. I am Malini Shankar. Thailand is worth every ounce of the tourism hype it gets. The moment you enter Thailand, you notice the difference. The creature comforts, the colorful cocktails and fruit juices, the attention to detail in the airports, the variety of food, tourist-friendly infrastructure, efficient service, among other things, makes you feel welcome and comfortable. It was again a half day in transit. But the moment you set foot in Thailand, you see the sophistication in the economy and it impresses you. The care and comfort for physically challenged passengers, my anxiety vanished after arriving in Thailand. Even the so-called low-cost airlines airport, the Don Mong Airport in Bangkok, has a vast array of creature comforts. After a five-hour layover in Bangkok, I took an early evening flight on Thai Air Asia to Krabi. I arrived in Krabi and checked into the Reset Hostel, which is located close to the beach and gives you stunning views of the sunset. Reset Hostel is run by a young couple. It is very well kept, has a choice of male and female dormitories as well as a couple of private rooms and mixed dormitories. But what struck me most was the wide choice in the buffet breakfast. The next day, I was booked for a day trip to the James Bond Island. It was a trip of a lifetime. Words cannot describe the beauty of the landscape and the seascape. The mangrove forests, the fault lines that jut out of the sea, the sea breeze that lets your hair fly, the contrasting colors, the food and the merry laughter on the cruise ships, the sighting of birds, rocks, caves, cliffs, marine wildlife, it makes for an inspiring day's outing. Finally, when you arrive in front of the James Bond Island, despite the tricky hopping in and out of the boats, the sight of the rock is not just mesmerizing, but the allure for shopping kitsch and Thai textiles beguiles the woman in you. The tour includes a lunch break in the Muslim village where vegetarian options included fried rice and fruit, but enterprising travelers can check out Pad Thai, colorful cocktails, Thai curry with famed lemongrass flavor and a variety of other native Thai foods including squid, 
prawn curry, tom kha khai curry and rice, papaya salads, tom yum and so much more. In the Muslim village, one cannot expect pork for those who want to indulge in red meat. From experience, I share this, it helps one to base oneself in Krabi and do one day tours of Rayleigh Beach, Ao Nang Beach, Koh Lanta, Koh Yao Yai, Phoda Island, Koh Phi Phi Don and Phuket instead of shifting from one place to another luggage in tow. Then one can take a flight to Langkawi for another three days to hop over to nearby islands for sightseeing if one so wishes. But by and large, all the islands have similar ecosystems. Ao Nang and Rayleigh beaches have tourist-friendly infrastructure and accommodation types to suit all budgets. I took island hopping too seriously and booked for myself a low-budget beach bungalow in Koh Lanta with a private toilet which looked very photogenic, but it was a beach bungalow with an attached toilet and nothing else. No food outlets other than some beach restaurants which were very expensive. No room service, no buffet breakfast, so not a very practical option. In order to avoid a beach party, I stayed back in my bamboo hut only to realize to my shock that no dinner was available at the resort that night. I had to manage with dry fruits for dinner that night. That is one of the reasons why I said earlier it is better to base oneself in Krabi and do day tours of the nearby islands. But Phi Phi Island is a must do. Koh Phi Phi Dawn is so photogenic. On Airbnb, I got a fantastic looking log hut in a forest setting for $50 a day. But there was no AC. And to go to Koh Phi Phi, one has to make an informed decision. There is no public transport, as no four-wheelers are allowed within the island. It's a merry place for those who really enjoy walking and the outdoors. On arrival in PP, the chap who had come to the pier to pick me up had not displayed my name on the board. Rather, he had mentioned his own name on the display board. Secondly, the name of the resort that Airbnb had displayed mentioned the log hut as room filler, on the internet that is. However, the guy from the resort had identified himself as from Ingfu Resort. That was the name registered in Thailand. Now, how are we supposed to know this? I went past him. It was only when the ship crew who assisted me with my huge suitcase uh, to the arrival deck they beckoned me to stop that I did. The ship crew prompted me to tell this guy that I am the guest he is waiting for. He was too sleepy and said something in Thai language to which the crew from the ship nodded and asked me to accompany him further to the market square at the head of the arrival deck at the pier. He told me to wait there and took his tip and left me to the elements. A while later, I saw other passengers also waiting at this same square and figured that this was the actual pickup spot for guests to PP. It took another 30 minutes for an old and frail looking man with an apologetic grey stubble breaching his face to come to me with a luggage trolley. No vehicle in sight anywhere. The language barrier made him incommunicado. He deposited my luggage on the trolley and gesticulated to me to follow him. A furlong later, I figured that I could not quite climb a mountain accompanying this man and my luggage on foot. I kept whining, asking him to bring a vehicle. What he told me was not comprehensible. He stopped a passing motorcyclist and said something to him and asked me to explain the situation to him in English, all by flailing his hands wildly. The motorcyclist was kind enough to understand my situation and offered to drop me at room filler. I took my passport purse and sat pillion on the motorbike. The frail porter took my luggage including camera bag and return flight tickets and went to the resort on foot. I did not know who this guy was and I was utterly nervous. I only knew he was kind and helpful. Pipi Don is a head-shaped twin island with seawater engulfing the isthmus that connects the two islands. We started searching for room filler, but he did not know about it as he had never heard of it before. Up we went on one hill searching for it in the forest covered hill. We stopped at a village and asked around. None had ever heard of room filler. 
Up we went on the other hill again. We came down to the pyre again between the two hills. He told me that the safest place for me to wait for the resort to pick me up was at the tourist police station. So he brought me there, explained the situation to the cops, left me there and went his way. Imagine my state. I was convinced by then that this internet booking was not just a rip off but I may be in serious trouble. I started crying in desperation. In panic I offered to show my visa and passport to the cops. They said it was unnecessary. One cop knew English and asked me if I had the contact number of the resort. Between sobs I told him that it was there in my email but without Wi-Fi I had no access to my email. He helpfully signed in with Wi-Fi password and I gave him the contact number of the resort. The cops called the resort. The driver of the resort was asked to come to the police station and pick me up even if it be on a two-wheeler. Meanwhile, handsome cats in the police station kept me company between sobs. So finally, I reached Room Filler or Ingfu Resort by 12:45 noon even though the ship had docked at the pier at 9 a.m. sharp. I was famished, hungry, upset, shaking with fear and rage. All emotions rolled into gritting teeth. At check-in, I did not have the energy or the nerve to complain further. I asked the owner come receptionist why she had not sent a vehicle when they had sent someone to pick me up at the pier. How are guests expected to walk uphill with luggage? I asked her. By walk, she snapped. That was when I was told that PP Dawn does not have vehicular movement save for two wheelers. I told her with moist eyes, imagine how one would feel ending up at the police station when one comes for a nice seaside holiday. Then came the discovery that the fabulous looking log hut in the forest actually lacked air conditioning, a mandatory fixture in coastal areas of the tropics and more so in Thailand. I immediately upgraded my room to a poolside air conditioned luxury room and successfully bargained. Hell, I deserved it after skipping dinner, meals on flights, falling on my knees at an international airport and losing my credit card in PP Dawn. Unfortunately, I could not do much sightseeing owing to the fact that I am not fit enough to walk downhill and uphill to do sightseeing in PP. That was a pity. The port authority operates a round the island boat trip for a cool 600 baht, which is supposed to be highly sought after especially by Europeans and Americans. I am told it's a magnificent color kaleidoscope of nature's blessings on the tropics. After 3 days of stagnating in the resort, I only did a bit of birding. learning the thai cooking making friends in the resort and a bit of textile shopping and filming inside the resort i finally left pp by ship again to reach krabi for the connecting flight to kuala lumpur to head back to india the return journey by ship from pp to krabi offers the spectacle of cool sea breeze sea spray and the beguiling sights of fault lines appearing above sea level as mountain chains it is a live and fascinating lesson in marine geology On reaching Kuala Lumpur airport homesickness hit me hard. All my family members, pet animals, cousins were all waiting for my return and boy I couldn't wait to eat home cooked comfort food. It prompted my former colleague in Sri Lanka to exclaim that we Indians love our food so much. Thai Air Asia flight from Kuala Lumpur to Bangalore seemed an eternity and I kept looking down longingly into the bay of Bengal. Now I'm seriously preparing to film in Cambodia. Thank you so much for sharing and watching my experiences in Southeast Asia. Please do subscribe to our channel by clicking on the bell icon. I look forward to your feedback. I'm Malini Shankar signing off from James Bond Island for Digital Discourse Foundation.